The reverse charge VAT scheme for businesses who are both CIS and VAT registered have been in for a few months now. Amongst my clients, I can see from invoices received that not all businesses are fully up to speed on what these new rules are, and HMRC are about to get stricter with compliance, and there runs the risk that those that don't comply with the new rules could end up with unnecessary penalties. I'm Rich Smith, and Thrism is my business, created to help your business. Originally planned for 2019, the reverse charge for CIS scheme actually went live on March 1st, 2021. It's been introduced to combat VAT fraud within the construction industry. From this date, all businesses, including sole traders, partnerships and companies, must follow the new rules if they are registered with the construction industry scheme and also VAT registered. Some estimates suggest that it will affect some 150,000 UK businesses. For this video, let me introduce you to Carl. He owns a building services company specialising in domestic home improvements. He's been contracted to complete some work for the Jones family. Carl often uses subcontractors to help with aspects of the builds he undertakes for his clients. So meet plasterer Paul. Paul is a self-employed plasterer. Both businesses are registered for CIS and VAT. Now, for simplicity, I won't be going into depth about CIS payments as I want to focus on the VAT aspect. So, prior to March 2021, when Paul was brought in to assist Carl with a project, Paul would send an invoice to Carl. Paul would charge VAT for the service provided at 20%. So, Paul would charge £1,000 for the service and then add £200 for the VAT element. At the conclusion of the job, Carl invoiced the Jones family for £2,000 plus £400 VAT. Carl then pays Paul a total of £1,200. In a super simplified version of events, the VAT would be handled like this. When it came to filing VAT returns to HMRC, Paul would declare that he received £200 from sales he made and pass the £200 to HMRC as an output tax. Carl would declare that he received £400 of VAT from sales but also paid £200 in VAT input tax and would claim this from HMRC and then pay the difference. Carl's VAT bill would be £200. Essentially, Carl gives Paul £200 Paul gives £200 to HMRC, and then HMRC gives £200 back to Carl. Obviously, VAT returns are more complex, with many more transactions for input and output tax, but I hope you get the point. Now though, it's different. If we repeat our transaction again following the reverse charge rules, then things change. Now, Paul invoices Carl showing £1,000 for the service and that there is £200 of VAT to pay. But this time, he notes on the invoice that the reverse charge rules apply. When Carl receives the invoice, it is he who accounts for the VAT as both the input and the output tax. Carl pays Paul £1,000. Paul doesn't receive the VAT portion. When it comes to VAT returns, for this transaction only, Paul will declare the net value of the sale, £1,000, but will not make a note of the output tax, the £200. Carl, on the other hand, will now declare £200 of output tax, but not enter the net value of the sale, and simultaneously claim £200 of input tax from the transaction in the normal way. In effect, Instead of the money going around in a circle from Carl to Paul to HMRC and back to Carl, it now just stays with Carl. If we add the £2,000 invoice to Carl's client, then we have a situation where the client pays £400 VAT. Carl declares a total of £600 in output tax and £200 in input tax. His VAT bill is now £400, which is £200 higher than before. But remember, Carl has kept the £200 that he would have ordinarily given to Paul, so he isn't out of pocket at all. So, what's the effect of all this? Well, there might be some short-term cash flow issues for some subcontractors, as they will receive less money into their accounts. But when it comes to paying their VAT bill, 
there'll be less to pay and a greater chance of obtaining a refund. The contractor, on the other hand, will keep more cash in their business for longer, but will likely face higher VAT bills in the future. The biggest difference is actually in the presentation of the invoice. Where the reverse charge rules apply, there is some special wording that needs to be clearly visible on the invoice. HMRC suggests one of these to meet the legal requirement in the VAT regulations 1995. Most of the time, this will go in the bottom section of the invoice. The other thing to bear in mind is that the amount due should not include the VAT amount. A couple of notes to bear in mind. The reverse charge scheme only applies to standard rate and reduced rate VAT. Where the supply involves zero rated items, such as may be found with new builds, then the reverse charge doesn't apply. Likewise, if the supply is made to a private individual or to a business that is not CIS and VAT registered, then normal rules apply. One more caveat is that if the end user is a business which is CIS and VAT registered, then the reverse charge rules don't apply if the supplier has it confirmed by the customer that they are the end user and that has to be in writing. A lot to take in there. But the key points are that this applies to transactions between businesses that are both CIS and VAT registered. The invoice from the supplier has to have the wording clearly visible to the effect that the reverse charge rules apply and the money received by the supplier won't have the VAT element. Ultimately, everything is balanced. Subcontractors' VAT bills will, expected, will be expected to be lower and contractors' VAT bills will be expected to be higher. But don't forget, the cash flow for both businesses are automatically adjusted so as not to make a difference. I do hope that you found this video informative. If so, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more explainers and advice. Till next time, I'm Rich Smith. Thanks for watching.